Are you ready for some high adventure coming up next on the Mutual Audio Network? The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. The Hawk Chronicles follow the adventures of Detective Kate Hawk, who went from a Baltimore police detective to intergalactic investigator, from fighting crime on the streets to crime in the stars. In the last episode of The Hawk Chronicles. Hey, you know this could get ugly with Kelly. Forrest is going to have a lot explaining to do. I don't think she'll be able to get past the gate if she went to Walter Reed. This is the mining planet, Galaza. We have reconnoitered a couple of sites for the bat. Captain Jocko, you'll determine which is best for you. As for the Mercury, your ships won't be landing, Captain Nate. Wait a minute. I'm just going to sit out there like a big fat target? Nelson, got your message, but I've been on the road. What's up? Thor and I were wondering if you went to Walter Reed. I'm just now leaving. The gate guard has been on duty since 0730 and hasn't seen Kelly yet. Let us know as soon as anything develops with Kelly have their info, and we'll need a good description. I can do better than that. I got surveillance video. Excuse me, ma'am. May I help you? Where is Pierman? And you are? The one who was looking for Pierman and isn't leaving until she talks to him. Now, where is he? Ugh. Sir, I'm sorry, but I couldn't stop her. Kelly, what on earth? It's here. The Roosevelt Monument from Long Wharf. It's here. And now, episode 86, Exposure. What is this doing here? I saw my father walk into this monument and disappear. Is this where he went? Now, Kelly, calm down. That's a rather ridiculous statement, don't you think? You actually saw him walk in. He walked around the back, like this, and disappeared, right through here. This monument hasn't left this pedestal in over a month. And why is it here? What do you need with Roosevelt's elevator? We maintain old evidence, and evidence that is outsized for various police departments. This is evidence? In what kind of case? Didn't Kate tell you about it? No. She never really discusses her cases with me. As best we know, someone either pranked a small store in the downtown area by putting this replica on the roof, or the store owner created a publicity stunt to draw attention to a failing business. This was Kate and Barnes's case. At any rate, this is in my care now, and my tech Robert has been working with the Baltimore PD lab to thoroughly analyze it for Trace. We'll store it here until the case is closed, and then scrap it. It's more than a coincidence that I see my father hanging around the real one, disappearing, and then I come here to see a replica. And that is exactly what it was, Kelly. A coincidence. Now, you have some real reason for barging into my office. I'm here to find out what really happened to Kate. Dad says that she's in Walter Reed. And I know I can't get in there. You're close to Dad and the rest of us. What do you know about this? I know exactly what you know. And I know your father is probably wondering where you are right now. I'm sure he's figured out that I'm looking out for my sister. Why won't they let me see her? I only know what your father told me. She was caught in some sort of a gang crossfire and was taken to Walter Reed. Her situation is critical and there will be no visitors until they stabilize her. Now that should actually be very soon. I suggest you go back home and wait for them to contact you. I'm not good at waiting. Unfortunately, Kelly, you don't have a choice. You will accomplish nothing by driving to every location that you think might have an answer. There are none. The hospital will call as soon as there are any further developments. Now, I have work to complete. Do everyone a favor and go home. I'll go home when I'm ready. Well... Mr. Pierman, I think that went rather well. <sighs> Too many close calls with that one, Robert. Too many close calls. Do you want me to have her followed? I don't think that will be necessary, Robert. We have all our bases covered. She can't get in anywhere. She got in here. Which brings up a good point. Just how did she get in here? Uh, you know, sir, I just remembered. I need to check our vehicle storage lot. You do that, Robert. And lock the door behind you this time. I'm glad you have the video surveillance. Well, in this neighborhood, you need it. Now, if I remember, that should be somewhere about this frame. Do you have just one camera? Yeah, just one. Covers pretty much the whole lot. Most importantly, it covers the entrance and the exit just in case someone tries to steal one of our cars. Ah, yeah, here, here it is, here it is. Now, check out these two guys approaching on foot. Wearing suits. What stands out to you? Like he said, 
their suits. It's like they walked right out of a 1940s movie. I thought the same thing. Plus, the one guy's wearing a fedora. Now, who wears a fedora these days? I thought, okay, I guess they're coming back in style. I hope not. Yeah, your head is way too big. You'd never find one that fits. I know the picture's not great quality, but do you recognize either one of them from your time with Wong in Stockholm? Uh, no, I don't. They have a different way of walking. I would have noticed that right away. So, these two clowns tried to blow up some towers? We don't know that for sure. But from what you told us, there's a good chance these two will go to the top of our suspect list. So, uh, mm, I gotta ask, uh, any reward if these are the guys? Yeah, knowing that you may have saved a lot of lives and property. Uh, they ain't gonna pay no bills. Tell you what, I'll make a copy of this tape and give it to you. If it turns out to be the lead that helps us catch these guys, you'll have video of every TV station in town will want. That's right. Maybe the national networks might want it too. And if it's not? Then... You could sell it to one of those UFO alien shows. Aliens! Bought a car from me! Hey, you know now, that's not a bad idea. Hey, and listen, I'll hold that hot little model out there just in case you want to upgrade. Well, if it's not a Volvo, it's not an upgrade. Answer. John, I hope you have some good news for me. Well, the good news is we may have avoided a disaster with Kelly. Please, don't tell me she was there. I'm afraid so. Plus, she saw the stip. What happened? At first, she was quite excitable, especially seeing the Roosevelt stip. I reassured her that we were holding it in evidence from Kate's case. I also reassured her that it was just a replica, all part of a grand hoax to lure business to a failing store. Did she buy it? It was very hard to tell. She was quite concerned about exactly what happened to Kate. I told her to go home. Let me guess. She snapped back at you and stormed out. Yes, exactly. She said she'd go home when she was ready. How in the world did she manage to get into your secured facility? I'll have a long discussion with Robert about that. Where are you headed now? Can you set me up a uh, transfer to the Charles Street Stip? Certainly. Are you headed my way? I'm going to go by SIS headquarters first. I feel like I need to fill in Captain McCall on Kelly's investigation. I'll call you when I'm finished. Maybe Robert or someone could pick me up at the station and I can get back to your place for a Roosevelt transfer. Certainly. Just call when you're ready for the Charles Street transfer. Thanks, John. Hope to see you soon. Voice command. Say command. Call Kelly. You've reached the merits. Sorry we can't come to the phone right now, but if you leave your name and number, we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Kelly, I know you're there. Please call me. Better yet, please go home. What are you going to do about the kids coming home from school? I promise, I'll call you as soon as I hear anything and we can both go see Kate. Please call me back. Call from Kelly. Answer. Kelly, where are you right now? Where are you? I'm looking for you, obviously. Don't worry about me, I'm fine. The kids are taken care of. I'll be home this evening. Look, I know you're upset about your sister, but running all around the Western Shore isn't going to help any. Perriman called me and said you were just out to his warehouse. What on earth did you expect to find there? What I'm not finding anywhere else? Answers? Kelly, honestly, I, I don't know what to say right now. You had me worried. Not answering your phone, showing up in Baltimore. I didn't know what to think. Welcome to the club, Dad. I just can't sit by and do nothing. My sister could be dying, and there are just too many people not talking. Look, I drove two hours to Walter Reed to get answers, and I didn't get through the gate, and I'm her father. Now, I'll be headed home soon, and I suggest you do the same thing. Please, just go home. I have one more stop, then I'll go. Kelly, where are you going? One quick stop, then home. What stop? Traffic's a little heavy, Dad. I better go. Kelly... See you soon, Dad. Latuma's portal in two hours. Copy that. Steady as she goes. No need to alert anyone that we're in a hurry. Aye, Captain. Aye, Captain. That, that just doesn't seem the same as Sheena calling Rick, Captain. You know, I bet you miss Sheena. Miss? Like missing a root canal. Not the way I heard it. 
You two got along quite nicely. You are talking about Sheena the Jabotin, right? The Jabotin who can't be forgotten. More like the rotten Jabotin. Look, when you two were trapped in this safe room and Wi-Fi hijacked the ship, it kind of had to get a little bit cozy after a while. Well, there was a point she was looking at me rather longingly. Oh, as a love interest? No, as a lunch interest. Honestly, Barnes, you didn't learn much about Jabotins, did you? <laughs> yeah, enough to know I'd never want to date one. Date what? A Jabotin. Ha, <laughs> I was suicidal, maybe. Nate, what's our ETA? Two hours to the Latumas portal, then under four to get us into Galaza orbit. We're going to cruise at standard speed to avoid any unnecessary interest by rage control. Sounds like a plan. Once we get into visual range, we'll gather the troops and conduct the final briefing. We all need to be on the same page to make this plan work. What's your confidence level, Jocko? It's a plan. For it to work, we need to execute. I wish you'd use a better choice of words. Well, we have to make it happen. How about that? And that'll work. In the meantime, the bar is open and the pool table awaits. Uh, no spirits for me or my men. We save that until victory. Now, as for this game you call pool, I'm interested to see the strategy of the game. Sweet. It's kind of new to me, too. Maybe it'll be fun to put a little wager on the side. I take it, Agent Barnes, this is the hustle you referred to earlier? Barnesy, you ratted me out! No, saved your hide. The last thing you'd want to do is scam an IDF elite Marine. Well, I guess we can just play for fun, then. I never play for fun, Captain Nate. I play to win. Captain, unidentified craft, starboard, and level at 50,000. Trajectory? The Timus portal navigation calculates that we'll be ahead of them by 25 units. Stand by. I'm not sure I want someone coming in behind us. I concur. I recommend that we deploy the bat when we get closer. I'll take Carlos with me and we can do a quick recon in stealth mode. Tika, continue at standard rate. Let me know when they get within 15,000 and we'll deploy the bat for recon. Aye, sir. I'm afraid our game of pool will have to wait, Captain. I'm going to brief my troops. You think it's serious? I think I can take him unless he's sandbagging me. No, no, the other ship. Oh, the other ship. Could be anything. Lotuma's portal leads to a couple different portal junctions. Could be another freighter. I'll let you know when we ID the vessel. Now, you up for a little pool? I'm not very good. Do I look that stupid? Do I have to answer that? Hey guys. How did it go? <laughs> I think Soren here bought a Mustang. Not hardly. But if it had been a Volvo dealership, then I might be riding in a Volvo P1800. We bagged the cash used to purchase the van and turn it into evidence. We also have transaction papers and surveillance video. You're that confident in these two as a suspect? After seeing the video footage, I certainly am. The way they walked, the way they carried themselves, it all reminded me of my time with Wong and Herman. Plus, their clothes looked like they came from the 1940s. They just looked too out of place. They looked completely out of place. They walked right over and picked out the closest van and didn't even haggle over the price. And they paid cash. The bills had consecutive numbers. That is odd. We should be able to track down the origins of those bills from the serial numbers. You have the make and the model and the plates on their new van. Right here. It's our opinion that they won't be registering the vehicle with the DMV for new plates. So we suspect they'll be riding around on these temporary tags. I'll get someone to start running down these names and addresses. But I, I have a feeling they're bogus. We'll get a bolo out on this van ASAP. If you like, Soren and I can start running down these at serial numbers. All right. I'll start on these names and addresses. Hey, where's Farnsworth? He's at the impound lab going over the abandoned van. Between that and what you two found, I, I, I think we're close on getting an ID of these suspects. Have you heard anything back from Mr. Hawk? Nothing lately. I'm sure he's out chasing down Kelly. It's like playing pinball with six balls in play. Hey, uh, speaking of pinball, they had one at that chicken wing place. Maybe you could uh, teach me how to play, Nelson. It teach you? Right. I bet you're a real regular Tommy at the game. Who's Tommy? That's right. What's right? Who's Tommy? Th that's what I'm asking. Who's Tommy? Well, you're correct. It was Tommy. By who? You're asking me? I don't even know this Tommy guy. So, Tommy who? I don't remember if he had a last name. I just remember Tommy. The pinball wizard. So will this Tommy guy, will he be there tonight? 
Come on, Soren, let's go get lunch. I'll have some music from Tommy on my mini player. I'm gonna have to educate you. He's a singer too? <laughs> I got to meet this guy. Who are you guys talking about? We're trying to explain to Soren about who's Tommy. Oh, the pinball wizard. Now you're talking my generation. Oh, so he's old. You know this guy? Anybody from my generation knows Tommy the Blind Pinball Wizard. Ah, so he's old and blind. I should be able to take him then. What's he talking about? The who, but he doesn't know that. You people aren't making any sense. I told you, I'll explain it to you at lunch. So, detective, what did you find in the van? A solid link to the bomber. We found the same strange print that was on the bomb. Great. Now, if we can link the van to the two Nelson and Soren are tracking down, we've got our suspects. Let's hope that the lab can lift the prints off the money and paperwork we discovered. What paperwork was that? We talked to the car dealer about the two suspicious men. We recovered the cash they used and the paperwork they signed. What denominations of cash did they use? Hundreds, and they were consecutively numbered. We're going to run a search on them now. Was there any indication as to why the van was abandoned? It's in perfect running order. So it's obvious they knew it was hot. Yeah, you can only drive around so long in a van with made up company logo. These guys know what they're doing. Captain, unidentified vessel in range. Very well. Jocko, you copy that? Roger that. Depressurization at 70%. 70%. All systems in the green. My team will be on standby to assist you if something goes wrong. Copy that. You and Carlos keep your heads down out there. We just want to know if they're friendlies or bad guys. Understood. Depressurization complete. Systems check. Read back. All systems go. We are go for release. Switching to TACCOM 1. Switching to TACCOM 1. That one to Mercury on TACCOM 1. You copy? That one. This is Mercury. I have you 5x5. Five five. Stand by for bay door opening. Standing by. <laughs> Gravitational rotation now at one-third. Stand by for release in three, two, one. Positive movement. We are clear the mercury. Clear the mercury. Bay doors closing. Good hunting. Thank you. Well, hopefully it's nothing. I'd hate to butt heads with a rage vessel before we even clear the portal. I don't think they'll try anything on this side. Once we enter the Latuma zone, well, that's when we have to worry. Tika, resume navigation and return to 1G. Aye, Captain. You know, this just doesn't feel right without Kate. She's in good hands. I mean, look at you. You were shot in the head and would have died on your Earth. Doc Co. not only put you back together, but gave you biometrics to control wireless signals and telescopic vision. Too bad he couldn't make you better looking. Yeah, thanks, Nate. You were always encouraging. I know she's in good hands, but there's already been one attempt on her life. If you hadn't been there, well... Hey, don't worry about it. I was and nothing happened. That hospital is as tight as Fort K. Knox. Knox. What? Knox, Knox. Who's there? No, it's Fort Knox, not Knox. The case silent. You know, I'm not so worried about the security. You saw her. She was pretty busted up. Even if they get her back on her feet, she's not going to look the same or even sound the same. She'll still be Kate. You know that. I know that. But will she accept that? Just with some minor scarring for me and this thing on my head, I was doubting who I was there for a while. She's going to be a stranger to herself. She's pretty tough, Bornsey. I think she'll be fine. That one to Captain. Go ahead, Jocko. Transponder readings confirm this is a heavy one freighter. Rage registry. Copy. Do you have visual yet to confirm? Uh, negative. We'll be close enough for our optical recognition system to confirm in about 20 minutes. Copy that. As soon as you confirm the vessel, call me. Will co. It's a game of wait and see. Detective Richards, I got a hit on the money. What have you got? We traced it back to Baltimore. Baltimore? Now that's a coincidence. Oh, and it gets better. I called my office and talked with Detective Mack. He was working on his detective rating at the time and was given the lead on an investigation. Agent Hawk was working. He took me along so I could get some field experience. Are you saying these bills are linked to the case you're familiar with? These bills are in the same range as money we collected from a major player in the bombing ring Soren was investigating in Sweden. So both of you are connected to this money? Yes, this money belonged to a man named Quo. 
What is the connection between the bomber and Quo? Is this all part of Wei Wong's gang? And how far will Kelly go in her quest to find out the truth about Kate's injuries? Find out the answers to these and more in the next episode of the Hawk Chronicles Circus Elephants. That's what zealots called Spire City. Tall, built to reach heaven and step foot on God's front porch. As much as I've come to know of this city, some might even try to kick the pearly gates in. But you know, labor strikes and all that. Makes for poor steel manufacturing. That leads me to where we find ourselves. The lower rings of the Spire City are filled with tall buildings like oil-dripped mountains pressed together. So the valleys are tight and sweaty, with acrid metallic steam hissing up from the street grates, and the occasional whiff of food or of a garden nearby if you're lucky enough to be standing but a few yards away from them. The sun hardly reaches us unless it's directly above, and even then, the crisscrossing monorail lines and hovercraft constantly blot out the light. It's funny. I always imagined God being able to pierce any darkness. But it seems he respects a man's choice if he holds up a hand to forbear. And here, we begin our tale. 